Hey everybody, this is Nelson, Happy Dragon Reptiles. Come back y'all with another reaction about Mount Brian. You know, sorry I didn't put this out earlier, but it, you know, it's real now. It's real now. So, the rarest animal I have gotten unboxing rivalry. Uh, this is another one of my favorites. This is up on the top tops right here because uh, wow. You, you'll see. You'll see. I'll put it this way. It's albino and it's rare as it gets. That's all I'm giving you. So here we go. I know you guys are probably dying in anticipation and so am I. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's the cutest little thing in the world. For the people that first watching this video, I love when he does that. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. As for me, it certainly is going to be because we have some really cool packages to unbox. We have some snakes that are coming in that I'm super excited about. And again, we have that really amazing package of that rare animal that I've been telling you guys about for the last couple months. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this package right here with this really uber rare animal that I set up and set up yesterday. So if you didn't see that, go ahead and click the link in the description and you can watch the setup yesterday. And for those of you that guess, you'll get your answer. So this is the box of this room. But you know, before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up something else, you know. What? You know, I'm looking at the time, so all right, no, only the people that haven't watched it, that, that's all I'm saying, the people that haven't watched it, what, what's your guess? Like he said, well, what's your guess? Comments of what he has. I said, I gave you a hint. It's albino, extremely rare. Extremely rare. Hang on a second. I was just kidding, guys. I swear to God. So look at this. I swear to God. This, there's nothing in this box at all. But I do have the shipment. I promise you I do. But look at this. this is, look, it's, it's empty. <laughs> I wouldn't have just thrown the animal. I know some people are going, oh, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> this is why I love this video, man. He got me twice. I was like, grr. <laughs> oh my God, Brian just threw the animal. I wouldn't have done that. Regardless, I am going to show you that animal a little bit later, but I have two shipments of other animals I'm super uh, excited about. So let's go ahead and unbox them right now. And for the record, this is not from my buddy that ships me the ball pythons. There's no ball pythons in these shipments whatsoever. And I'm pretty excited about a few of the things that we're getting. We haven't had them in a while. And some people have asked me like, why do you buy snakes? Why do you get shipments like this? Well, it's a couple reasons. Sometimes we buy animals from people like this that we want to have breeder stock for. Other times we buy because we don't produce the animals or don't produce enough of them and we want to buy them and offer them to people that want to buy snakes. So I only deal with really reputable people, people that I really trust. You know, they have amazing collections and this guy has a really phenomenal collection and I trust him tremendously. So I never concern about him at all. And oh, look at all these bags here. There are some really amazing animals in here. Let's go ahead. I know, I know people watching this, you've had animals. This is Leo, by the way, for people that haven't seen him. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't he? But uh, and I, I know y'all unbox animals. I mean, can you imagine that many to unbox? What I mean, you, I've unboxed two at one time, and that was. I mean, it ain't. I'm not saying it's difficult. I'm just you know that many. That'd be wild. And start with this one right here. Woo -hoo -hoo. This is so cool. And by the way, there's a couple animals in here that Jessica is extremely excited about. So uh, we actually got some of these last year and haven't had them ever since. So I'm really excited to get them again. And of course, these are a bunch of hog island boas. Now the hog island boas are a smaller species and the majority of them that you see out there now are integrated with Colombians, which means they're going to get a little bigger. These are some of the only pure hog islands that I know that are left in the country that are being produced. On a regular basis so it is so exciting to have these guys again and you can see they have a much more muted pattern and what's interesting is at night sometimes these guys will actually lighten up so they're almost like the chameleon of the boa world but hey there's still a lot of other stuff to look at and i should be having ba my uh solomon allen tree boa spirit the one that i show everybody that is in the uh zazzy and he does that at nighttime uh he will turn this white color, you know. And I've noticed when he's in that white, 
you know, when he sh turns that shade of white, he's a little more aggressive than usual. So, there you go, right? Babies of these myself pretty much anytime soon. But you know, I have such a demand for them, I didn't want to wait when these were available. I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and get them because so many people have been asking about them. So let's take a look and see what I'm talking about. Of course, I'm talking about little Brazilian rainbow bows. Look at how amazing. And this guy has a great bloodline of these guys. So I'm excited. I'm really surprised he's not getting bit. But, uh, well, I mean, the Colombian bite a lot more. I know that for a fact. I have one like a like a to actually hold a few of these guys back just to kind of increase my bloodline and get some new blood into it as well. Again, we've been having a lot of Colombian rainbow boas, but very few Brazilians left. So we do still have a handful of females that are due to drop. But look at how incredible these little guys are. And again, these are already feeding. So within a week, week and a half, these will be on the website. And I know that's gonna make a lot of people happy. And you know what, guys? I actually lied about there not being ball pythons. I actually kind of forgot that there were a couple ball pythons in the shipment. And again, it's just ball pythons that we do of course you know you know he's got a, a surprise reptile you know what i'm saying all you know he's gonna pull that out on it produce some and we even have some on our website but the demand is so high that we always need more than what we're actually going to produce and take a look at these incredible little guys here of course these are a bunch of albino ball pythons how freaking awesome is that and again we produce a whole lot of albino ball pythons but i'm going to be honest with you they're such a popular snake that we could sell two or three hundred of them a year at least if not more and we certainly don't produce that number but it's not surprising that they're so popular because look at how incredible these guys are and i think I ended up picking up about 10 animals from this so I think we already had maybe 10 or 12 on the website so there's some more coming oh my god these guys are gorgeous and I did buy one other type of ball python too let's go ahead and see if we can find them and that would be these banana ball pythons right here I mean take no you know I want a handful of banana ball pythons don't y'all <laughs> nah yeah man I get I get his love I do I had to well, I mean, I, I had to shorten mine down. You're the older I get, and I have issues that I don't talk about. It's not life threatening, so it doesn't matter. Um, and it kind of slows me down. But I mean, it's best for the animals to have only what you can take care of. I mean, and I know to most of you, it's like, yeah, duh, duh, nails on it. Yeah. Well, there's people probably listening that don't know that. So there you go. Take a look at these things. These things are absolutely stunning, yeah. aren't they? And the reason I get a bunch of banana ball pythons like this is, again, we produce a lot of them. But now that these animals are like a couple hundred bucks a piece, this is one of the most popular ball pythons out there. So when we have an opportunity to buy a bunch, we can go ahead and resell them. It works out great because we can supply animals to people that really want them when we start to run out. And again, this guy is an amazing breeder, so I know that they're always going to be top-notch animals. I mean, come on, take a look at how incredible these these guys are all right yeah those babies i mean you talk about well started they're beautiful they are i mean you see how uh, healthy they were i mean that, that's moving on to the last animal in this shipment that i know clutches sorry but Jessica's going to freak out about. And although I know that Jessica is super excited about these, to be honest with you, I'm pretty excited about them as well because I haven't seen these in quite some time. And I'm not sure that we're going to have these available, to be totally honest with you. I think that we're going to probably keep them. And if we don't keep them, Jessica will probably take them home. And of course, these are little Longicauda, which is a subspecies of boa constrictors. And at this size, they don't look very much different than a normal boa, but they stay much smaller and much darker. And you you can see that really interesting head pattern there. That cross pattern is really indicative of Longicauda. And again, it's a boa constrictor Longicauda, which is a subspecies of either the Imperata or Constrictor Constrictor or any of the other ones. It's one of the smaller species. Very few people are breeding these guys in the country anymore, so it's a real pleasure to be able to get some. And we only got two pairs, so again, I doubt we're going to sell them. We're probably either going to keep the two pair, or maybe I'll keep a pair, and Jessica will take a pair. I'm not 100%. He's going to keeping every one of them <laughs> like he does with uh, i don't know if y'all see the one where he, the anaconda babies where everybody's getting bit and <laughs> so he, he trying to keep most of them <laughs> 
Sure, regardless, I'm super excited. And this was a great ship. We have a bunch of other snakes that were basically the same. So there's a, there's a good 100, 150 snakes that we're gonna have to set up. So I am super excited about it and it's super, super cool. But we do have one more shipment before I reveal the big surprise. All right, next up is a little bit smaller animal. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have going on here. Okay, okay, these are really cool animals. I'm gonna start kind of a little bit simple and kind of work my way up. And uh, I am not, when I take these out, uh, and you can see there are a bunch of corn snakes, I'm not even gonna to attempt to put them back in this tub, because there's no way, so I've got some shoe box. I had to put my glasses back on, he said small. So I was like, you know, I'm all over like, old man, and I won't see it. <laughs> I'm gonna put them in. But regardless, uh, the reason I bought these corn snakes was really because I had been talking to you guys about the fact that I'm going to retool a lot of my colubrids, basically just raising up kind of more and more animals. And I want some new blood. Fun fact, I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, my nerdy Bar Brian Barcheck self, nerdy person does, he started out when colubrids, colubrids is what he loved. That's, that's really what he wanted to do. Yeah. If you look back, I'm not going to tell you where it's at, do your own history. But yeah. Bloodline, quite frankly. You know, I don't want to continue to raise up stuff and then not have new gene pool. So that's why I got these. And these guys are actually really beautiful. Take a look at those right there. And again, what these guys are is just a bunch of normal corn snakes. Uh, there's some snow corn snakes and albino corn snakes. And again, these aren't anything like crazy to speak of, for instance. But you can see how pretty the snow corn and albino corns are. But really, for me, it was just about getting new bloodline. You know, this way I can raise up some animals from someone else's stock that isn't related to mine and I can breed them. Just get some new gene pool in the colony. Well, the next tub here is a little bit different. To be honest with you, you can see these guys kind of just look like normal corn snakes. There's a locality that people oftentimes say is like the nicest corn snakes out there. And that would, of course, be the Oka tea variety. And there's some really stunners here. So this guy has a... No, you can't you can't say that because I, I had an Oka tea bite me. They, and it was some, I was herping. <laughs> really beautiful Oka tea line and so this is going to be really great to raise up it just makes things more rich they have really beautiful defined saddles oftentimes they have nice black borders oh and these guys are getting crazy on me let me put these away all right so now that those are put away see told you <laughs> Oh, yeah. I want to show you one in particular animal that really stood out to me here. And this animal right here, this is kind of the perfect example of an Oka tea. You can see it has very strong saddles. And as it gets bigger, those saddles are going to fade a little bit. And then it's going to get a nice black border around it. So this is a beautiful animal here. I mean, they all look really good. But this one is definitely going to be a keeper. It'll be a perfect way for me to kind of retool my Oka tea line. So I can start doing that. And then you can breed them into other mutations and get like reverse Oka teas and all kinds of other really beautiful mutations. And lastly for the corn snakes, we have these guys right here, which are actually a co-dominant mutation called Tessera corn snakes. And you can see how beautiful these guys are with their racing stripes and that just... Now, uh, Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles is one of them he had. And he had a grown, I think it passed, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I am. Uh, and his is beautiful. Gorgeous, right? But if you look, if y'all know anything about Solomon, any kind of uh, uh, Solomon Island ground boas, right? You know the uh, San Isabel ground boas. Now, if you look on the side right there, just think San Isabel ground boa and that stripe down their back. It almost looks like one. It's it's real close, actually. Just amazing cool side pattern. And again, this is a co-dominant mutation, which means that if you breed one of these to a normal corn snake, half the babies on average are gonna come out and settle with saddles with this cool racing stripe. Now these guys have actually been bred into the Oka teas. Now what happens when you start breeding like Oka tea to say a South Florida animal or whatever the case may be, of course you have like kind of a muddling of locations. So you can't call this an Oka tea to Sarah. You just have to call it a really pretty generic corn snake to Sarah and the vast majority of corn snakes are not locality specific as a matter of fact there's only a very small group of people that actually do breed locality specific corn snakes but for whatever reason the Oka tea is the one locality that a lot of people still kind of hold high enough to where they don't kind of muddy them up but that being said it's very common I gotta take a, a second just 
trying to keep my um, keep my composure a little bit because uh, I mean you know sorry it's kind of silly probably I don't know to take an oka tea and breed it into something like a tessera because it really makes that pattern just more bold and more beautiful. Anyways, this is a great shipment of corn snakes. I'm super excited that I'll be adding a bunch of these to my future breeding stock. Okay, you guys ready for the big surprise yet? Okay, I'm about to show you. I promise this time I'll show you the animal I've been keeping secret from you guys for almost two months. All right, guys, now here really is the box and there is really something in here and uh, I cannot tell you how excited I am about this and I can't wait to share this with you guys. Now let's back up a second here. I have some pretty strong connections in West Africa so when a really cool animal pops up whether it be a ball python or something else oftentimes I at least get offered the animal. Sometimes I buy it, sometimes I pass on it. It just depends on what it is but in this case it's an animal that I actually owned at one point or an animal like this I owned at one point and I really always regretted selling it. With that being said, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep this animal. Does that make sense? <laughs> I bought it because I just really love it and I might keep it or I might decide not to keep it. I'm not 100% sure yet, but regardless, I got it and I'm really excited. And as far as I know, there's only been three or four of these ever in existence. I owned one about 12 or 15 years ago. There's one that was down in Florida that now resides in- No, oh, that no, ever in existence. That's a, that's a phrase, right? <laughs> Texas, that's and great. I think just maybe this one. There might have been another one that I don't know about, but I think that that's it. Anyways, let's, let's stop talking and let's get into opening, all right? Yeah. I'm kind of shaking here, guys. Okay, here we go. You guys got any guesses yet? I mean, you saw what I set up yesterday. You have an idea what you know kind of environment it has. Do you have any idea what kind of animal it is? Here we go. Ready, ready, ready. It's amazing. It's amazing. Here it is, guys. Can you see it? Oh my gosh. All right, all right, all right. I know you guys are proud. He loves to do that, man. He did. He loved to do that. <laughs> Probably dying in anticipation, and so am I. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's the cutest little thing in the world. Oh my gosh! Oh, holy moly! Oh, come on, buddy! I'm not, I don't want to hurt you. Oh, all right, guys, that's it right there. An albino Nile monitor lizard. That's right, a little albino Nile monitor lizard. And of course, this is a T negative albino. You can see those amazing colors and of course those pink eyes. I mean, just take a look at how amazing that is. Now, some people have been breeding the albino water monitors, which are really a superior animal in all honesty because they get bigger. They're typically a little bit more docile than the Nile monitors. But you know what? I just love Nile monitors. I've always loved them. Of course, I have the jet black ones that are on Alone with a buddy of mine, Chris, down in Alabama, and hopefully at some point we're going to produce some of these things. So I had to go ahead and get. When I when I visit the reptarium, which I definitely definitely am going to plan to do, uh, yeah, I'd love to see the the Nile monitors and it. Well, whatever. animal there, of course, every beautiful animal there. <laughs> the little albino when I was offered it. And I'm not gonna lie, this little bugger here might have been a little bit of a knee-jerk type of purchase. And maybe it's something I should have thought a little bit more about, but the truth is when I got offered it, I just said I have to have it. And it's just absolutely amazing. Now, again, this is one of the rarest animals I've ever had in my collection. The fact that, you know, this is the only albino baby Nile monitor in the world. And of course, there's only been two or three others ever found and no one has I cannot imagine what he paid for that animal in the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that was true. Yeah, I heard about what he paid for the uh, the uh, the jet white now, you know, and that was wow. <laughs> has ever brought them so uh it looks like oh you know what's cool about check this out what's cool about little albino monitors is you can actually see through their tail and i can tell right now this is a little boy because i can see its hemipenes right through so that's awesome this is a little boy so i need a couple things from you guys no yeah that would make it easy to sex i mean if mother nature's listening make 
right there at the hemi pin kind of clear so we, so we can just see it you know take away all the probing the horrible stuff that has to be done yeah Number one, tell me if you think I should keep him, or do I think that I should keep him just for a short while and then find another place for him? As well as tell me what you yeah. think I should name this little guy. Oh my god, he is just so adorable. I cannot believe how cute he is. Now, of course, the setup that I have now is only for a baby. So he's only going to be in there for maybe a couple months at the most if I keep him that long. And then he's going to have to have a much larger cage. That's why I ended up sending my black monitors down to Alabama. is because they have 10 foot by 10 foot by 8 foot tall cages for him. Now, they don't need that big of an environment, but they certainly need something that's pretty large. And they need, again, lots of heat, lots of space to climb, lots of places to high UV light they need all this type of stuff so if I do end up keeping this guy I'm gonna build him something that is probably gonna be like eight foot by six foot by eight foot tall with all kinds of things and then I have to just ask myself you know where am I gonna put that I have some ideas but I'm not gonna share them with you right now and again this guy would be a great addition to the zoo wouldn't you think I mean there is no doubt that people would come in and look at that animal and think holy cow how awesome is that so that's one of the things I thought too it's like from a zoo standpoint it's probably a great mascot animal along with a lot of the other animals I have so I don't know so what do you guys think I mean you're as excited as I am about this little guy oh my gosh I want to get him set up let him get settled in and then see if he can eat in the next couple days he has been eating for the guy that I got him from so I think he's going to be in really good shape so was it a good surprise is it a rare, one of the rarest animals I've ever owned so what do you guys think let me know down in the comments and do me a favor smash that like button if you like this thing oh my god there it is albino Nile monitor. For those of you guys that didn't see the build in yesterday's vlog, this is the cage that I made for him. So let's go ahead and get him in here and then I'll explain what it's about. There you go, buddy. There you go. There you go. There's a nice hot spot for you right up here. There you go. Oh, that's it. Look how amazing he is. Oh my gosh. He is this the cutest thing in the world? Oh my gosh. So let me explain really quick if you didn't see the build. Is basically I have reptile prime coconut bedding with a little bit of sand mixed in it just so that it kind of binds so that when he tunnels, he'll be able to have a little bit of security and it won't kind of collapse on him. Because the cocoa fiber is so light and airy that you can't really tunnel through it, right? I just have a nice water fish. We're gonna get a little piece of wood so that it can go across there. Of course, this is the part that is the most important here. We have two pieces of tile here and of course, core variegated drain pipe so he can go in here and hide in here he can go up top where he is right now and get 125 to 130 degree hot spot and then down here we shot it with the temp gun it looks like it's about 95 degrees so he can go from 125 130 down to 95 on this bottom piece of tile here of course inside here is going to be about 95 degrees and then he gets over here it's all the way down to 82 degrees so he has lots of places to choose from he can go all the way from 82 to 125 130 degrees lots of places to hide lots of places to tunnel and burrow so i think this guy's going to do absolutely great in here again this isn't going to last for a long time a couple months and then we'll have to build something much bigger if we decide to keep them again let me know in the comments what you guys think about keeping them and number two what we should name him so there he is guys the big surprise i hope you guys are as excited about it as i was all right guys so there you have it my reveal of my big surprise i am so excited i hope you guys are excited as well i'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here guys because i tell you what it's like an emotional roller coaster when you get stuff like that it's like my emotions go up and die it's just great and i'm super super excited about it thank you guys so much for joining me and thank you guys for all your suggestions and names and what to do and all that other stuff you guys mean the world to me can you do me a couple favors can you smash that like button for me as well as hit that notification bell so if you turn on those post notifications you know when i post a video which is every day by the way you guys know that make sure to be kind to somebody and i promise i'm going to see you guys tomorrow and there you go <laughs> you know uh, I, I started to do it yesterday you know I told my wife I said I, I, I want to get that out and, uh, she's like oh you've been upset you know I'm like oh, well that's fine and it's not just brown I mean I want y'all think I'm crazy it's just uh other, other stuff too you know so, so I have Bible life yeah uh, one thing I was going to say if you know, you come on, you know, get in the comments, give a shout out to Brian. I'll give a shout out to you when I do my videos. At the end of my videos, I'll give a shout out to everybody. Gives a shout out to him. If you think I can't do it, try me. <laughs> I'm a very determined person. <laughs> so I will do it. And oh, by the way, Afro Herb Keeper deleted the video. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, 
Yeah, it, it's bad. So, but I got to him verbally, and uh, it was deleted. So, at least he did that, right? All right. Love everybody. I will see y'all tomorrow.